Since becoming a father of three, my summers have no longer been kind of touring the world, gigging, doing festivals, that kind of stuff. So when I start looking to kind of going back on the road is when the kids go back to school and my kind of commitments to Spitfire mean that part of my role as a founder is, is that of an ambassador. So I have a kind of a whole schedule of um, seminars and tutorials and kind of meet and greets, that kind of stuff. So whilst working as a composer, it's essential that I have my own kind of touring rig, if you will. And a friend of mine is just about to embark on a, like a proper world tour and asked me about what I would recommend using, employing, buying to set up a portable rig. So here's my rig, uh, which some of you will be familiar with. Just gonna take you through bit by bit what I think are the absolute essentials, the things that I tick off before leaving home, particularly when I'm in the middle of composing a TV series or creating actual sonic content for Spitfire, both of which I'm doing at this time. So let's clear this. Oh, to be a new modular user. When I have a shower, I find patch cables in crevices. So let's start with the controller keyboard. And I've plumped and got to love the X key 37. Basically with any traveling keyboard, there are compromises. So for me, this is very much a personal choice. Full size keys, which do, you know, the velocity sensitivity is good on them. You actually can play something that sounds genuinely pianistic without having to alter all of the velocity MIDI information. But it is also just a personal thing. Number of keys, size of keys, and size of the unit itself. This is the wired version. They do do a Bluetooth, but I use this, the wired version, for a reason that I'll come back to momentarily. There are only two major problems with this keyboard. One is we take for granted the little flange that you have on the back of keyboards. And I find often when I'm using the mouse, I'll actually be playing keys here where usually I'd be resting on whatever that little back flange thing you get on most keyboards. So that's mainly a little gripe. The major problem with this is this is keyboard number two for me. They are incredibly, for something that's meant to be on the move, I find them incredibly fragile. With this one key, I think it's because it's the only key of that shape. The rest are, yes, the rest are kind of have these beveled in. For some reason, this top key always comes off. Fortunately, they produce a really sturdy case, which I say is an absolute must buy if you're gonna tour with one of these. And here it is. And the great thing about this case, not only is it really sturdy, it's, very, it's, it's actually hard here, it also contains this pouch, which is great, because in order to make my workstation complete, there are a few things that we need to add on. And conveniently, they all fit into this heavenly pouch. So, sustain pedal, I'm a total sustain pedal slut. Can't go anywhere without it, certainly can't make any music without it. My palette gear, and these are great because you can, they're modular, you can build them. So I could even just go out on the road with, with that if need be. Um, gives me everything I need. It's got nice colors that shine up when you use it and people go, oh, what's that? When you're on trains and stuff. So basically expression modulation there and then I've got record, stop and vibrato control there. Two USB to USB mini, which is one for the keyboard, one for the palette gear with two USB to USB C converters for the MacBook Pro. And here's the breakout for the sustain pedal, which is why I went for the wired version of the X key, not the wireless, because the wireless doesn't have this sustain pedal breakout. Now, whilst I'd love this all to be contained within a single unit, I simply cannot find anything that is quite up to the task. I quite enjoy having this reach of the faders, I must have the sustain pedal, the full size keys, which are, once you get used to it, you know, fairly good with their velocity. The great thing about this keyboard is that it has a case which fits all of this stuff in. So it's all neatly contained. These things never leave the side of this. So this is always packed in there, come rain or shine. My trusty MacBook Pro with a coffee cup ring that I'm actually quite proud of. My kind of travel companion, and uh, as with any companion, there are things you love about it, and there are a few things that you hate, but 
all in all, I love my MacBook Pro. The specs on this one are, it's a 15 inch 2017 3.1 gigahertz Intel Core i7 with 16 gigabytes of RAM. There's a link below to a video I made about the new MacBook Pro and why I won't be getting it. Not because it's bad, it's just because this is good enough. And I think this is a wonderful companion to have on the road with you, a piece of kit I use more than any other. A pair of Bang Olufsen headphones, which I will link below. I have been through many headphones on the move and I have a few specific needs. First of all, that this is removable. The thing for me that fails quicker than anything are the cables. In fact, you'll see that this isn't a Bang & Olufsen cable. I've already been through one already. So, removable headphone lead there. They are noise cancelling, although I never ever use the noise cancelling. I find it's, it's excellent, but I just find it to be uncomfortable to use, but also I play my music so bloody loud, I don't have much use for it anyway. The other key thing for me with headphones is that they fold in like that so they can be packed into a case. Now the reason I use these and not a pair of say uh, DT770s or anything on the move is the impedance is good for travel, they're nice and loud, but also I believe they have a bit of a, a smile curve. They have a little bit of a, a bump up at the top and a bump at the bottom. And I find with ambient noise around me, that's what you really, really lose. So whilst I wouldn't mix on these, whilst I wouldn't use them in the studio, these seem to be a great kind of EQ response profile for really noisy environments when you're playing music. Need I say more? Power. Been through a few of these. I have a UK plug. I also have uh, one with a USA one on, but it's power and it's expensive. Now for those of you familiar with my vlog, you won't be a stranger to this, which is the Samsung T3. It's a fantastic hard drive, two terabytes, but I've actually eschewed using these because what I'm finding is this connector here fails after kind of repeated use. This for me strikes me as something that's built for occasional use, but I'm literally plugging this in and out numerous times a day. And I've been through about four of these drives because of these things failing. I, it's not the drive itself that's failing, it's just this connector. And what will happen is you find yourself having to wait forever for it to kind of make contact. So basically I've decided to do away with these. They're also not as fast as these. Yes, I take a solid state drive, just a raw drive out with me on the go now. The reason for that is you're not seeing things. That is a four terabyte SSD. So basically my entire set of samples on this and anything I'm working on, including video, many cuts of video and stuff like, you know, my logic sessions, Pro Tools sessions, and all of that can live on this. And I have a duplicate one of these back here at the studio that I back up to. Now I carry two interfaces basically for this drive. The inner tech, this is, I don't know, I, mean, I think it's about $20, is basically an enclosure. Helps to protect the drive. That just simply goes in there like that. It is admittedly one of the worst made things I've ever encountered. So that goes in there like that. And we've got a simple USB so that's for that cable there. But I carry also this secondary cable, which goes basically direct into, whoopsie, into this. Um, this is born of me just not trusting the build quality of this. And if this kind of fails, then this is my kind of backup scenario here. My trusty USB-C doobery. Uh, this has got me out of jail a lot of times on the move. Quack, quack, there we go. And basically SD card reader, both mini and or micro and standard. Another USB there. Ethernet, really handy for uploading stuff in hotels. Some standard uh, USBs, but really importantly for me is the HDMI converter for seminars, that kind of stuff. It's kind of universal, that. So carry that around with me. Strangely, I don't carry around an HDMI cable. That's maybe an oversight, something to go shopping for today. And I think probably most surprisingly, my backup hard drive that I use when I'm on the go is this 256 gigabyte SanDisk SD. 
Uh, why I like using this is obviously it's tiny, it fits into my wallet, or indeed I can put it in the second card slot of my camera, which basically means that this and this are kind of separate, if you know what I mean. If I lose one thing, it's unlikely I'm gonna lose this as well, unless I've done a total clusterfuck. This simply fits into my Dewberry there. If I was properly going on the road, I would have two of these, but basically I have another one of these here that I back up to. And there we have it, my compositional touring rig. And no, not forgetting this, affectionately called my fuckbox. It did once play host to a guitar rack that I used to kind of create a sound universe for a production called Trauma, but actually now just contains my CPAP machine, which is the machine that keeps me alive at night. I suffer from apnea and my toothbrush and a spare pair of pants. Essential for a touring rig, I would say. I would love to hear from you about what stuff would be included in your kind of essential compositional, on-the-go, troubadour touring kit, because a lot of what's contained herein has come from recommendations from this channel. So I'd very much love to be brought up to date on what you chaps and chapesses are using when you're on the road. Thanks as always for watching, and thanks to my friend for coming up with the question. Good luck with the tour. If you like what I do, hit like. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. And if you want to be notified when I put the next video up, just click that little bell button. See you next time.